श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अर्वैत गदाधार श्री वासरी गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम जिस का डॉक्टर शाह जिस हर फ्यू थॉट्स वाल आई वॉज इन द शाह एंड यू नो आई डू लाट सेल्फ रिफ्लेक्शन एंड आई लाइक टू से दैट वन आई केम टू दिस movement this Hare Krishna movement I was not looking for a religion or organization to join I do understand that different people have different needs and different desires that need to be fulfilled and sometimes when they come into a spiritual or religious or social movement they're looking for a movement to join me personally I was on a mission to find God you know or to get some answers from God actually I was I really needed some answers about something you know and actually the answers are still coming in little by little but um i'd like to say that the world right now is very judgmental and it's very um divided and people like to judge other people according to their religions or their beliefs what i found in studying the teachings of bhakti vinod thakur shri la prabhupada is that god is not sectarian we see a part in the book of revelations where Christ mentioned the seven churches and that he was ex- explaining the characteristics and the teachings and the pra- practices of the seven churches and there's the number 7 is a recurring theme in the book of revelation seven candles seven stars seven angels seven seals matter of fact you know my neighborhood is mad advanced i'm from east elmhurst there's a rasta flower i out here named seven seal You know the rosters in your hood is deep when you got a roster named Seven Seal. That's like having a roster in India named Hari Krishna or having a roster in Africa named Kunta Kanti. You know, I'm just saying, you know, it's just like, you know, there's a lot of advanced souls in this neighborhood. I even remember the bomb building. The bomb building, it got that name because a guy was building bombs and he blew off his arms and stuff. I had just moved to this neighborhood. I was in Corona and then we had moved to East Elmers, which is a few blocks difference. It may not be much of a difference geographically, but etherically, there's a big difference between East Elmers and Corona. Etherically or on a subtle plane, there's definitely a big difference. But that's maybe another video if you guys will remind me. Um <clears throat> and then i hate when this happens it's stupid man i got this brain you know what i'm saying sometimes i'm a little mundo <laughs> so anyway right going back to the original subject there's so many different modes of worship and for example in the bhagavad gita in the sattvic or the mode of goodness in the mode of goodness or spiritual modes the supreme lord does not accept any flesh offerings no blood no meat sacrifice so you offer him natural products organic products made from scratch with love and devotion he gives you specific instructions in the bag of that gita as it is so i would advise you to see that but to remind you that god is not sectarian even though the vedic system is all encompassing and it tells you the things that's forbidden in the age of kali yuga like it's forbidden to become a sanyas or a renounced monk to to renounce your family life it's actually forbidden You know there's people who do it but that's because they're not fallen they're not subject to the material energy but for the average person like me and you sanyas is very dangerous you know but I'm not that's somebody else's subject they could deal with that it is forbidden to have a child with your brother's wife in the old days if a man was very sick i don't know impotence or whatever if a man was sick or if he died before they had children it was permissible for the wife to have a seed by the brother's younger brother so that was for old age we do see that in the bible as well so that's a common practice in the east but now that practice is forbidden in this age of kali yuga it is also forbidden to slaughter a cow in this age but slaughterhouse industry is one of the biggest things in the western world And when you say the western world, let's not have no doubt about this, you know? And I'm going to say this and I hope nobody's offended, but it's a fact and we just have to deal with it. When you say western world, you really mean white people because the western world is the home of the white man. 
doesn't mean it's good or bad or whatever. It just means when you're talking about Westerners in the Western world, they ain't talking about Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Brazilians, African Negroes who were brought over here as slaves. They're talking about the white man, particularly Great Britain, European imperialistic powers, and Germany and their expansions, the American colony or the American civilization and the Australian civilization. So when you see people say, go to the West, go enlighten the people of the West, pretty much they're saying, go clean up the white man. And that's, hey, listen, I didn't make it up. It's there. Just, you know, look it up. In this Western world, you have so many different forms of worship. You have Rajasic worship, which is worship in the mode of passion and anxiety. And you have Tamasic worship, which is worship in the mode of darkness and ignorance. And in each of those worship systems, Krishna also accepts your offerings. So in some systems, they offer meat to the Lord, not in the sattvic system, not in the Vishuddha sattva, not in the spiritual system. In the spiritual system, you can only offer the Lord love. But when you come down to the material world and get into the mode of sattva or the mode of goodness, you can only offer him fruits, flowers, things that grow from the earth, milk, cheese, dairy products, with the exception of eggs, no fish, no animals, but that's a material mode. So you offer him the highest of material things. And when you get down to the lowest spectrum, Krishna also accepts your offerings because in ancient days, people would make meat or blood offerings to the ancestors. Now, ancestor worship is growing popular again because of the popularity of the African traditional religious systems. People are looking for a way to reject the Christian Western indoctrination. And as such, their path usually takes them to Islam or Yoruba and deity worship. So if you want to understand why people kill chickens sacrifice or offer chickens if you want to understand why people kill goats and stuff like that that is because these are offshoots of the original vedic teachings not to be confused with the word indian but vedic which means knowledge which condensed from the first vibrations in the universe so these are everlasting vibrations because the prarabdha or the karma which is manifest now is merely a manifestation of seeds which were planted before so the universe you're living now is just a manifestation of the base desires and activities of the previous universe. So when you're dealing with rajasic methods of worship, then there are times when people will offer blood sacrifices to the ancestors. And once again, that's confirmed in the Vedas. As a matter of fact, in the ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, you'll also find out that during the Vedic era, there were human sacrifices. So that's why we have to be humble as a people and don't talk before we know things because, you know, a lot of things that we would say, oh, we don't do that. We're Hindus. We're Hare Krishna. No, you did do that in either a past life or in a past yoga. You did do those practices. You may be more evolutionarily advanced now. You may have Sumedhasa. You may have more advanced, finer brain material as a result of your yogic practice or your eating proper things like hot milk with spices, which built good milk, not that stuff in the stores, which builds up finer brain tissues, which allows you the capacity to understand higher spiritual concepts. So, yes, you may be pure and righteous now, but there was a time when you was offering human sacrifices. And in the event that you want to understand well if krishna doesn't eat meat how can he accept the blood offering he explains in the bhagavad gita so clearly that he will increase your face faith in demigods so what happens is to get to god for some people there's gradual steps some people go straight to him some people never meet him for a long time and some people go the indirect route which is demigod worship demigods do accept things ancestors do accept things that krishna does not accept but because vishnu's other name is yagna or sacrifice and the enjoyment of the sacrifice itself so yagna is the act of sacrifice rituals and the act of receiving and enjoying the sacrificial rituals so because vishnu's supreme or other name is yagna when a person goes to a yoruba or santeria and they make these blood offerings to the lord 
what happens is it's intercepted by the particular demigod that they're worshiping or the mode of energy that they're sending that to. So then Kali, Mother Kali, Durga won't accept meat, but Kali will accept the meat offerings. There are ancestors who eat meat. There's ancestors who like tobacco. There's ancestors who like rum. So we offer these things to them and that hopefully in pleasing these demigods will somehow please the Lord. The Lord accepts it both ways because he's achinta beda beda. So he's simultaneously one and different from the demigods and the material world and the spiritual world. Simultaneously, anything you could identify as God, he's simultaneously that and he's simultaneously there and he's simultaneously not that and he's simultaneously not there so once again when you see the lord talking about all of these different churches just because you see christ inside of a church that doesn't mean he's a member of that organization simultaneously he's there but not there so god will hide himself in different religious systems and different spiritual systems but he is not secular and there is no religion that can lay claim to god that they own god or possess god only those advanced beings who have developed a pure sense of love of god can lay claim to ownership of god not your church not your Hare Krishna, not your Hindu, not your Catholic, not your Jehovah Witness. He may come visit your church. He may bless your teachings, but you do not own him. And he never signed up to become initiated in your spiritual system. However, continue making your sacrificial rituals towards the Supreme Lord or towards his dedicated administrators and servants, people who run universal affairs called demigods. You go ahead. Because eventually these paths will lead you back to Krishna. No, it's not that all paths lead to Krishna, but Krishna said himself, O son of Partha, all people follow my paths in all respects. So as long as you're trying to contact God, he accepts you. Krishna says, as a matter of fact, that anybody who ever calls his name, whether jokingly or serious, he, their name never leaves his heart. So once you say Hare Krishna, or once you say Hallelujah, or once you chant Allah's 99 beautiful names, I used to love to chant Anur, the light. And I used to also love to chant Ar-Razak, the provider. And you know, because these, these names were important to where I was at in life at the time. So once again, join up on the bandwagon of God, no matter what level you on, and he will guide you. He said he'll give you the intelligence by which you can come to him. He said it. So listen, if you don't find yourself becoming more intelligent as time goes on, it's because you're not focusing your energies in the right direction. And intelligence itself is a product of the material plane. So what you want to do is eventually purify yourself to the point where your false ego, your intelligence, and your mind are being directly directed by the soul within. And the soul itself should be directly directed by the super soul within. To get more information about that subject, as it is dot com, A S I T I S dot com will give you some of these absolute truths in a very understandable way. But once again, I would like to say, yes, God does accept your offering, but you can't offer him meat in a Vedic system for the modern era because he doesn't accept that. You can offer him meat or blood in the form of ancestor worship, let's say as a Palero or as a Baba Lao in a Santeria or the Yoruba system or Lukumi or Candomble. You know, there's so many religions by which if you insist upon dealing with dead animals or you like the feel of killing animals or sending their spirit then you go ahead but I'm, I'm gonna tell you what animal sacrifice was in the vedic age in the vedic era the mantras were very powerful mantras are so powerful that you can actually kill a person with word and you can also bring a person back to life with word so the vedic mantras used to they used to set up a fire and they would take an old cow and send it into the fire while chanting vedic mantras and on the other side of, a fire, of the fire, a young calf would come out. The same spirit, soul, same etheric body, but different material encasement. They would use their mantras to test the efficacy of their revivification powers. So in other words, mantras can revivify you. As a matter of fact, there's a location in the brain where the bindu is located. They say it's at the lower base of the skull where the cowlicks are. I don't know what the heck a cowlick is. We never use that word in school. Some people have two cowlicks and some people have one. 
But apparently, this Bindu is where the nectar of immortality, this Amrita, is located. So because the nectar of immortality is located in the, in the skull, it's connected directly to the... Oh my God, is it the Swadhisthana Chakra? Or the Manipura? Okay, the chakra that deals with the solar plexus, there's a sun inside there. And apparently the nectar of immortality in your brain drips straight down to your solar plexus and it evaporates, it burns up instantly. So through yogic practice, through kundalini yoga, through controlling the five life airs and the prana, the idea is to trap all of that nectar of immortality as it comes down from the skull right here in the Vishuddha chakra where the goddess Saraswati reigns, the, the area of flow right here. It all begins right here because you can speak you can think a thought, then speak a word, and it will manifest in action. So you have to trap the nectar of immortality in this region. And when you trap it and circulate it in this region, some people do different things. Some people chant Hare Krishna and it works for them. What it does is, as that nectar of immortality circles itself inside your Vishuddha chakra, it gives benefit to the body to the mind and to the intelligence. It revivifies you and it extends your lifespan. So these are ancient sciences. This is not religious sentimentalism or fancy. Fancy. This is real science, you know? And bhakti yoga definitely has some potent side effects that I'm starting to really realize in my daily sojourn. And I'm starting to wonder, are people reading my mind or am I actually planting thoughts in their head? So I'm going to actually do some experiments where I'm going to start planting thoughts in people's head. And before I, I corrected myself and I caught myself, I said, that's a dangerous experiment, you know, because especially if you have material desires, you, you could really cause yourself to become overburdened with material energy. You know, people come to your house, dropping off cars, <laughs> keys to yachts and stuff like that. If that's what you're oriented towards, I'm not really oriented towards that. So I've decided that I'm going to start planting a thought in people's head. Chant Hare Krishna, seek Krishna, find Krishna, become a vegetarian. Little things. I'm going to start planting thoughts in people's head and seeing if it bears fruit. If it bears fruit, then I know that it's me projecting my mind onto other people. But if it doesn't bear fruit, then it just means that the people I've been around have been receptive and they actually have been reading my mind. I'm not planting thoughts. They're going and they're pulling the thoughts out of my head. You know, a lot of people have powers nowadays, but I'm going to start doing some experiments. But the purpose of this video was just to say, in summary, Krishna is not necessarily a part of your organization. Your organization is a part of Krishna. He is the Supreme Lord. He is the Bahu. He is the Eka who maintains the Bahu. He is the one who maintains the many. So I, with that, you know, I just like to leave you with those thoughts. Go ahead, get your head right, get your spiritual practice on, but just understand that when you're offering worship to the Lord, if you're coming in the, in the house of the Lord with your shoes on, that's tamasic energy. That's ignorant energy because nobody can walk in dog filth and spit and then go walk in the house of the Lord and claim that the house of the Lord is clean. You can't bring a dead body into the house of the Lord because as soon as the spirit soul, first of all, this body is made of dirt. If I don't bathe this, this body, after about two or three days, it will smell very obnoxious. And it's so funny because the Vedas tell you that with the development of the earth element comes the scent of smell, sense of smell or scent. With water comes taste, with air comes touch, with fire comes vision, and with ether comes sound, Shabda Brahma. That's why ether is the highest of the material elements because Shabda, everything is for the hearing. If Brahma didn't hear the words Tapasya, then this universe would not be created. So it's hearing or ether is the highest of the senses. And then all of the lowest senses and element contain the elements and the senses of the higher elements. So when you get down to the earth, dirt, you get scent. But within scent, there is sight. Within scent, there is taste. Within scent, there is hearing. Within scent, there is touch. You see it? Because it's the earth element. Please don't get confused. Just go research these subjects. Go research, research, research. So this body is made of dirt. 
And if I bring dirt into the house of the Lord, that's tamasic energy. You get it? So we just want to deal with spiritual science. We want to deal with the top now. And the only way to deal with the top is to surrender to a certain process. People don't like the word surrender, especially people who've been through the diaspora and slavery. They don't want to hear two words. They don't want to hear service and they don't want to hear surrender because it brings them back to this material hell that we've been in in America for over 400 years. But we're actually going to transform that. We're going to transcend and purify that. And I call on you children of the Moors. I have to remind you that you are Kushites. You are the direct descendants of Lord Ram. When you see Selassie, you see Jesus. They were both from the tribe of Judah. Don't let nobody fool you. Ain't no hippie God coming out of the sky to save you. And if somebody is coming out of the sky to save you, he'll probably have an afro and a bushy beard. So don't let nobody fool you, man. All of that, I don't worship white Jesus. And that's why I say I could never be a member of nobody's religious organization because religious organizations paint the picture how they want it to be or, or they'll, they'll make it for their, their people that they're trying to attract. Vamana Dave, the appearance of Vamana, the dwarf incarnation. Now, if you know anything about human history and the avatars, you'll see the avatars will show you the evolution of life on the planet Earth. First God came as a fish or he was a water life form. Then one of his first, after he went through the beast forms like, like the boar, and the lion and stuff like that. The first human incarnation of God was a dwarf. And if you read the Srimad Bhagavatam, you read the Bhagavad Purana, it tells you he had dreadlocks and he was black. But if I go read Srila Prabhupada's literature, and I ain't bombing on Srila Prabhupada, but I'm a truthful man. If you go read Srila Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam, you see a little blonde haired boy, and that's supposed to be Vamana Dev. But that's not Vamana Dev according to the scriptures. The Shastras directly says, he can't, I think, I don't even know what the chapter is, but you can find it. Then Vamana Dave's appearance day is coming up. So the dwarf incarnation was the first people on the planet Earth. A lot of people say that most of our, all of the planet Earth people come from the Khoi, the Khoisan people. That's the people who speak the click language and they live in the Kalahari Desert, if I'm not mistaken. They are the click people, the short people with the nappy hair. Go watch that movie, um, The Gods. What's the name? It's the name, um, it came out when I was young. Something, the gods must be crazy. Check that movie and it'll show you your ancestors. Those people look more Chinese than Chinese people themselves. So I would like to say, if you want to worship in a Tamasic state, then Krishna can accept blood offerings, but only in the form of demigods. But if you want to worship in a Tamasic state, and you let's say you're a Vedic or a Hindu or something, you can't offer Krishna no meat because it says that that's one of the forbidden items in the age of Kali Yuga. So take this jumble of information and make sense out of it. Do your research, post any relevant links, and I thank you for viewing. Sun Man Patu, King of YouTube. Hare Krishna.